welcome to Brian Keane Fitness Podcast, where we talk everything fitness, nutrition, and mindset with your host, Brian Keane. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Brian Keane Fitness Podcast. We talk everything fitness, nutrition, and mindset to help you with your goals. Today's guest, I've got Barry from O'Sullivan Fitness. Hey, Barry. Hi, Brian. Um, so we got such amazing feedback from this episode a couple of weeks ago where Barry literally just came up with some questions and fired them at me. Um, and we did a real improv. Uh, most of my stuff is improv. Anyone who's been following me for a while, um, but a real improv way um, of answering questions. So Barry's came up with another three questions that he's just going to fire at me and we're going to improv it as we go along. Um, so we'll get right into the show. Barry, what's the first one? Yeah, so the first question I think is uh, one that people want the opinion and ask you a question uh, regularly on. Basically, if you were stranded on an island and you were allowed three books with you, which ones would you pick and why? Awesome. Okay, great question. I love book questions. Yeah, I knew this would be a tough one for you because you've read so much. Okay, and- yeah. For anyone following me a while, um, I read probably two, three books every week, um, normally two audio books. And then at the weekend, I try and get through a full book. Um, just again, I, I stopped watching TV apart from a couple of Arsenal games and anytime go away playing football or hurling on TV, I'll watch that if I'm not at the game. Um, but in terms of, well, a practical answer, I'd bring a book with how to get off a desert island, but yeah, <laughs> if, if I was avoiding, <laughs> avoiding that and I was going with just my three favorites, I have, I, this is a hard question to answer. I've got books that I absolutely love for different things, kind of like, um, there's certain foods I like to eat when I'm trying to get leaner. There's certain training programs I like to do when I'm trying to get bigger. Um, books are kind of similar. Depending on where I'm at in my life at that present moment in time, I tend to favor certain books. But the ones that always come back to me is probably Tony Robbins' Awaken the Giant Within, which I just think is an incredible book. I'm actually working with Tony Robbins in June. Um, I'm doing his business mastery where he's working with me and my business to try and move it to another level. Um, so I'm really excited to work with him in Amsterdam in June. But his book, Awaken the Giant Within, is incredible. Um, Jack Canfield's 20 Success Principles is very, very similar. And Jack Canfield is one is on Audible. So it's one I recommend more purely because you can't get Tony Robbins' Awaken the Giant Within on Audible. You have to buy the physical book. Um, he talks a lot about life lessons, things like linking pain and pleasure to certain ideas, um, how to take ownership of your own life and that you can't basically live your life as a victim or a victor. You've got to choose um, and the strategies to do that. So in terms of actual practical application in life, His book was one that supported me probably more than any other. There's a great story in his book um, about a stonemason um, where he speaks of a stonemason that's hitting at a rock and he's chipping and 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 and nothing's happening to the rock. And then bang, one hit he goes and the rock splits open. And he uses that as a metaphor for life that sometimes when you keep driving towards your path and driving towards your goals, you don't necessarily see the progress you're making yeah, until yeah, that yeah. inflection point when something happens and something just clicks. And you've probably found it yourself, Barry, with life and training and business that you're grinding and you don't know if you're on the right path and doing the right things. And then something just clicks. Yeah, yeah no, it reminds me of, of one picture I've seen online a few times where it basically shows two people uh, underground and they're digging they're digging in a mine and one person gives up just before they get to the diamonds and then the next person keeps going. So <clears throat> sometimes, like you said, it's it's a matter of keep digging and digging and digging and eventually, you know, what's going to happen for you. It's going to snowball effect. Things will work out for you. Um, even though originally you're kind of saying, oh, you're putting in a lot of work and it's it's not paying off. But like you said, you just have to keep at it and something will give eventually. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's, it's a case that that book allowed me to push through a lot of my own glass scenes in terms mm. of... There was aspects in my life, particularly in business and uh, relationships with people in general, where you felt like you were putting in all the work and you weren't getting the rewards that you thought you deserved or yeah. had made up the story or the idea to yourself that you deserved. And that book allowed me to see that there's going to be an inflection point. There's going to be a point when you hit those diamonds, where you hit and break the rock yeah. and then everything just seems to roll from there. Um, so that's probably one of my go-tos. The next one would be probably Seneca's Letters from a Stoic, um, which is my got to be up there in one of my top three favorite books of all time for a very different reason. Um, it's it's the language because Seneca was a Roman philosopher. The language is easier to access access than say Plato or Aristotle. Um, so, but if you haven't read any Stoic philosophy, I would start with Ryan Holiday's. Um, the obstacle is the way that was my introduction to stoic philosophy and basically to sum up 
letters of a stoic and stoic philosophy, the whole message from that idea of way of thinking is that nothing is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And the whole book is basically letters from this philosopher Seneca, where he speaks of that everything that you attach Every emotion you feel is an attachment that you have to it. And I know myself when I've had to deal with things like, you know, embarrassment or shame or guilt or anger or hate or whatever it is, they are attachments that I made to those emotions. And Letters from a Stoic allowed me to realize that I gave it these attachments. That feeling of hate was something that I either attached to it or was an emotion that was in me that I've been projecting onto somebody else. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I spoke yeah. about that in a chapter in my book. Um, it just in one of my life lessons at the very end of the book, um, I wrote the last section of the book for Holly so that if anything, you know, very morbid, but if anything ever happened to me, I'd be able to pass on my message to her via my book in the last chapter. Yeah. And I gave it to people to read just to kind of get yeah. feedback. And they were like, that's the best part of the whole book. Yeah. They're like, that's incredible in terms of what that's done to change my view. So I left it in there. Um, and a lot of it was down to one of the sections was if you're defeated by hate, uh, if, if you if you let hate consume you, you're defeated by it. And I realized that any time I had a dislike towards somebody or felt anger towards somebody else, that was the feeling that was in me that I was projecting on them. People will regularly ask me how I deal with hate and criticism. And if you follow any of my social medias, yeah. you see that I get more than fucking anybody. And I get that. Like, I'm going to split a room. I have an opinion on what I feel is you know, the the right or what I perceive right way of doing things in terms of nutrition and fitness, even though I'm open to changing my opinion when new evidence comes. But I'm aware that people will watch my thing and go, he's a fucking dickhead. I hate him. Yeah. And I'm fine with that because largely I've done that in the past. When I was going in my early 20s, when I would look at somebody on social media and I'd be like, oh my God, I hate that guy or I hate that girl. That was a projection of what was going on in me because I wasn't happy where I was at in my life at that time. And I was projecting that feeling onto them. So largely I find when there's hate coming at me now my automatic goal to is well that's a projection of somebody else's feelings on me that or it's an opinion or perspective of that moment in time and I've spoken yeah. of that before and I've spoken with that with you countless times that everything we have in this life is an opinion and perspective of this moment in time Marcus Aurelius speaks in his books on meditations which is very much like Seneca's letters from a stoic that he speaks that everything we see is a perspective and everything we hear is an opinion and when you can see life through those glasses, it means that you're very kind of happy with doing what you're doing because opinions change and perspectives change. I spoke about when I left my job, when I left teaching to start my own business, that I'm in a fortunate position now that I can serve hundreds and thousands of people this year that I'm in a business and in a position that I can do that through my programs, through my seminars, through my talks, through my book, which is out in the early summer. Yeah. But when I did that first, I was told by family and people as close <coughs> as my dad, that was like, that's not going to work. That's a stupid thing to get into. Yeah. Why are you doing this fitness thing? But the same people look back now and go, well, I knew you were going to make it. I'm like, you yeah. didn't though. That, But what happens is the opinion changed because when the circumstances changed and the actual physical world and the quote unquote, what looks like success and looks like you've made it, quote unquote, nobody's made it or no success. That's subjective to each person. But when people perceive that you've came out the other side, the opinions change because there's more evidence to be to back up the fact that you're now, quote unquote, successful in an area. But when you realize that opinions change and perspectives change, it massively allows you to deal with hate that's aimed in your direction or just people that aren't supporting you on your journey and goal. So my second book would definitely be Seneca's Letter from a Stoic. My third book then is my personal favorite. Um, not so much because I get anything from it in terms of Awaken the Giant Within helped me break through glass ceilings in my own life. Letters from a Stoic from Seneca and Marcus Aurelius Meditations. The Stoic philosophy helps me deal with a lot of the negativity that would come my way and my perceptions of the way I see the world. But my favorite book of all time is probably Robert Greene's Mastery, um, which basically Robert Greene was a historian and I'm a, I'm a massive history geek. I, I was a teacher and History was one of my main topics yeah. um, and I used to teach it and you could tell the kids all loved history because I'm like, I fucking love history. Yeah, yeah. Um, but And Robert Greene was a historian, but what he does is he speaks of the world's greatest people in terms of people who have mastered their field. So people like Leonardo da Vinci, people like Napoleon Bonaparte, who was a general in the French army, and what and the 10,000 hour rule that it takes to become a master in your field and examples of in all different areas from sports to warfare to 
invention and creations and people how they've mastered their fields i must have read or listened to mastery probably five or six times um it's just one of my favorite books of all time so i would be on a desert island with definitely <clears throat> with that one as well so great question nice and barry next one brilliant i don't think anyone has to read those three books now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of i've got it summed up great yeah. insight <laughs> um next question basically can you explain the prime ingredients to succeeding at your career goals or just life in general because obviously it's, it depends different for everyone. So what, what would you say, oh, a general rule of thumb? Okay, um, yeah, there's there are different things that will work for different people, but I think there's also some success principles that I think everybody on this planet, planet can benefit from. The first one is knowing where your strengths are and doubling down on your strengths and minimizing or outsourcing your weaknesses. Um, what I've found is everybody I meet, from you, Barry, to Paul, who came under my mentorship as well, um, Emma, who heads my operations, people have strengths in areas that uh, that you may not even think you know yourself. Yeah. And when you find out those strengths, you double down on them. I know myself, I am a naturally a strong speaker. I was a primary school teacher. I, I did a degree in marketing. I had to speak in front of you know hundreds of people giving presentations. I was all, always found speaking very, very natural. So for me to do video, Snapchat Q&As, Facebook Lives, live talks, seminars that I do, uh, I don't find them difficult. They are very much a natural strength in terms of I'm naturally able to speak in front of people. I don't get nervous. I get really excited and it drives me and I get really, really energetic before I give a speech yeah. and before I do a seminar because I love doing it. There's also the, That's a strength. But knowing that allows me to double down on it. Something like technology, for example, ironically, that I run all my business online, actual minimal details of PDFs and Word documents and these things, I fucking hate. Yeah. And I'm so untech savvy. Like, it's funny because people will be like, oh, I love your videos. You know, you, I don't I love it. You don't edit them. You don't do anything. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't yeah. fucking know how. Yeah. Like, I'm like, and it, that comes down to not being tech. I'm just lucky that I have enough contextualized information that I'm able to support and give people value through supporting them on their journey. Because if I had to edit a fucking video to do that, I wouldn't be able to get my message across, across yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. But knowing that, and I, I outsource my weaknesses you know i've got my tech team you know patrick heads my tech he does all my pdf stuff my landing pages all of the things that's tech based because i can't do them but i can speak and i can create content and the stuff that i love doing so anybody that's out there have a think about what you're amazing at what you find that you enjoy doing and that you have a strength in and then double down on that if you're somebody that's you know in, in starting your own business or just somebody that you know wants to be a better husband or wife or partner or whatever it is find the things that you have the most value in and then double down on that you know if you're creating a business and you're amazing at writing but you're terrible on video i say double down on writing start a blog maybe write a start writing a book you know things like that 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 accentuate your strengths and minimize your weaknesses yeah. the same as if you're a really really caring person but you're not a great listener you know double down on make sure that you're being extra caring to that person and make your partner aware that you're well i'm not actually the best listener can you pull me back if i'm not doing it? that's why it's so important to have your network and your people around you to pull you on your shit like because i you know i'm a good listener i can speak listen to people ironically because i talk largely for a living yeah. but i'm also a very good listener when i'm chatting to people because i find people i love fucking people like i love listening to people's stories they're conversing, They're conversing. i love that shit yeah. like i love People telling me where they're at and what they're doing. It's why when I meet people for coffee or I, you know, see someone that comes to my seminar and they come and speak to me after or are messaging me on Facebook, like I reply to all those messages. Yeah. You know, it's either me or it's Emma or Emma passed them on to me, you know, because I love fucking people, you know, because I know that that's a strength of mine because I have that natural curiosity. The next step that I would think is a massive success principle is finding where you have the most curiosity and then focusing your energy into that. The truth is, I subjectively am good at what I do. I know about nutrition. I know about fitness, psychology, business, stuff that I have interest and curiosity in. A subjective, I, I think I, I know what I know. Everything's an opinion and a perspective of this moment in yeah, time. Yeah. But I have a curiosity in those fields. So when I was in secondary school, I would sit at the back of classrooms and I'd be making out my workouts. Yeah. I'd be wondering how I could, I was calculating calories in the back of my 
classes because that's where my level of interest was. I was like, well, how many carbohydrates do I need to get the best workout in? And I would sit at the back of classrooms doing that. You know, now I have a massive interest in psychology. It's why I've applied to go back to do another, you know, a, a degree in psychology with a master's in neuroscience because that's where my focus and curiosity is right now. You know, find what keeps you so curious that you wake up in the morning and you were like, well, this is what I want to talk about. You go to bed and like, this is who I want to speak to about this topic. So if you combine your curiosity with where your strength is, you're going to be a very fucking hard to stop in whatever way yeah. you channel that. Yeah, you yeah. know what? Like, look at you. Like you have rugby has been your background. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, I think, you know, it takes a while to realize it. But then I started getting into the gym and now I'm starting to realize the both kind of mix together yeah. and combine, you know. So I think like you said yourself, you know, you find out what interests you find out what you're good at and you go that direction, I think you're going to be onto a winner. Yeah, that's it. Like that curiosity is huge because I know myself that and people will have very nice words to say about me and they're like, thank you so much for the value you provided in fitness, nutrition, my yeah. Snapchat Q&As. But if you ask me a question about my car yeah, or about yeah. flowers, exactly. I know fucking nothing. Yeah. You know, I've got friends that like love cars yeah. and have curiosity yeah. in that. I don't know. Yeah. I, I barely know the steering wheel from the fucking, the wheel that supports the car. Stay like, in your lane. You yeah, know? stay in your lane. Yeah. Like, it, it's so funny. When you stay in your lane and stay in the area where you're curious and stay with your strengths, you get places very, very, you get there very, very quickly. So regardless of what your path is, the success principle is going to be be curious and double down on your strengths. And one last quick one is going to be your work ethic. Like it doesn't fucking matter how curious you are or how good you are at something. If you don't work, you're not going to get anything. You know, it's and it's funny because a lot of people will have you believe and I've seen and this shit fucking annoys me on Instagram and Facebook when I see the high life of a fucking a jet liner or a fucking mansion in the background or a Ferrari with a photo of abs and you're like, that's not real life. I'm like, I think of those fucking photos on Facebook and Instagram like porn. I was like, that's not porn that you watch on fucking blow your load in my face porn isn't sex. And that's what Instagram is like, fucking photo with a mansion and a Ferrari and a jetliner. That's not life. That's not how most people are, you know? And that's kind of how I feel about that. And sometimes people will make you believe that there's a shortcut to getting that. You know, it's like, well, here, buy this program or follow my page or do buy my book and you can learn how to have a six pack ab and a mansion and, you know, the, a thousand girls at your doorstep or whatever. That's not real life. And it's something that I struggle with in terms of, the people that get stuff in life know what their strengths are. They're curious in their field and they fucking work and grind until they get it. So our last one is, if you could tell the Brian Keane from 10 years ago, two pieces of advice, what would they be and why? Okay. Um, first thing I would do is, and I'm, this is one that I've given talks in schools and I've given talks to younger kids on, is don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something I, the reason that I've been so slow, like I'm, you know, going to be 30 later on this year. The reason I've been so slow to make an impact and be able to provide people with value, because the truth is you probably haven't been listening to me or know who I am two, three, four years ago. Cause I was working as a primary school teacher. I was trying to run a business on the side. I then became a fucking ab selfie wanker. And one of those, you know, people that you see on every social media platform, and that's fine. Be an ab selfie wanker and try and provide value alongside. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've got friends that are abs. I'm an ab selfie wanker at times, like, but I was providing no value with people. Um, and a lot of it was down to me having that fear that I wouldn't be able to make it because people told me I couldn't. And I listened, you know, the only difference between the me now and the me of five, 10 years ago is that people told me back then I couldn't do it. And I believe them when people tell me I can't do it now, I'm like, fucking watch me. Like, that's the only difference. And when you can make that shift, you know, I, people will wait around and you, you may think you need permission. And the truth is, nobody's going to make your dream happen or make the life that you want happen except for you. You know, you've got to get up and you've got to do the work. If you use those success principles, like finding the things that you're good at, finding where your area of curiosity is and then working for it, you can literally get anything, whether that's to get a new job, whether to get into amazing shape, having a great relationship with your partner, whatever way you channel or whatever that looks like for you, you can literally have that, but you can't let people tell you you can't. Because even to this day, I'm literally speaking with people who told me that, oh, you'll never make a business work. Oh, you'll never be able to travel the world as a fitness model. Yeah. Oh, you'll never be able to do this, that, the other. I'm like, you fucking said that about this. 
Like, and they'll still tell me, go, well, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't go back and do another degree because it'll affect your business. I'm like, fucking watch me. Like, that's the only difference. So I tell people now, and any young person I speak with, and I speak with a lot of 16, 17 year olds, and I have a lot larger teenage audience that I would have thought, um, I was actually very surprised when I checked out my Facebook analytics and saw my 17, 18 year old demographic, the amount of people that were following me in that age bracket, I didn't realize I had that following. And this is largely for them in terms of people are going to go through your whole life telling you you can't do something. They're going to tell you you're fucking stupid. They're going to tell you that your dream is unrealistic. And unre- being realistic is the most travel road to mediocrity. You want to have a mediocre and average life? Be realistic with things. You know, what I would suggest anybody do is have a vision on what your perfect life looks like. Your perfect job, your perfect body, if that's what, what way you're channeling it, your perfect relationships, and then work backwards from that. Start with the end goal in mind and then work backwards and be aware that people are going to tell you that you can't do it along the way, but don't let that stop you. And the second one then is kind of ties back into what I was saying earlier, and I spoke about this in the last episode, is uh, if I could go back, I would have done what I'm doing now, probably earlier, even though I would never change my path, I would never change my journey, everything that I've been through, and my path as a teacher, and my grind, and my side hustle, starting my business on the side, built a work ethic in me that's, you know, serves me to this day, but if I could go back, I spoke in the last episode that we did a similar style, that I had made up a bullshit story that I told myself that if I worked in the fitness industry, I would fall out of love with fitness. I remember my dad said, look, if you're doing the gym and working and training and you're doing that as a job, you're going to learn to hate it. And I believe that story. And I took that in and that became a part of the, my thinking process. It's something that I'm very much a thoughts becomes things and audit your circle. Now, again, I've got great love and respect for my dad. He's his work ethic. He's instilled in me is something that I'll be forever grateful for. But those thoughts become things and normally your people closest to you. I was lucky that I had my yin and yang, that my mum was on the other side, that she was like, you know what, if you're happy cleaning the street, go clean the street. I was like, mum, I'm not happy doing, being a teacher. I want to try this fitness thing. She was like, then go try it. She goes, if you're working part-time minimum wage and you're happy doing that, then you go do that. You know, and I was lucky to have that yin and yang and I'm aware that not everybody has that. That's why it's important to follow people that make you either believe that you can do it or are a living proof that it can be done. Because I told myself the story that I wouldn't be happy. If I could go back to my younger self, I would make sure that I told him, do not let people tell you you can't do something. And to make sure you audit the people you hang around with and audit the thoughts you put into your head, because they ultimately lead to the actions you take. And the actions you take will create the circumstances of your life. And your life is basically all you have right now. The re- only reason that I have, quote unquote, successful, which was what, which is subjective to each person, as I've said. But the reason for me, my, my success is doing the things that I want to be able to do, being able to spend the time with my little girl when I need to, being able to provide and serve and provide as much value to people listening or watching my videos or following any of my content. That's success to me. And the only reason I've been able to do that is because I'm aware now that the thoughts that I put into my head influence the actions that I take. And that has created the life that I have. And anybody else can do the same. But you've got to make sure what you put into your mind supports the end goal, supports the end vision, and always think with the end in mind. Brilliant. Okay, I want to say a massive thank you to my guest, Barry. Again, loving these kind of episodes, a bit off, the, everything's off the cuff and improv, but more so with these, because Barry literally just thinks up the questions. Um, so if you want more information on Barry, where's the best place for people to find you? Yeah, you'll get me at O'Sullivan Fitness on Facebook, Instagram, and my Snapchat at BOSully92. Thanks for having me on, Brian. Nice. Definitely check out Barry's stuff. He's been doing some Snapchat Q&As, um, and he's got some great Facebook content as well on O'Sullivan Fitness. I've been following that myself as well. So make sure you check that out. For more information on me, and you can head over, over to my website, www.briankeefitness.com. You can find out about my two programs on there, my online program, which is basically the only program I have where you can work back and forth with me. Um, and I've got my G lean body program which is my program for ga players where you can build the body you want and improve your performance on top of it to get any questions back and forth with me check out my snapchat brian k019 or my instagram brian underscore keen underscore fitness which i'm very active on at the minute and um, particularly on instagram stories so make sure to check me out on there and facebook and youtube brian keen fitness thank you to Colm over at Foxonic for putting together the episode thanks for listening guys catch you soon